Say something to reassure me. So it's been a few days after the disastrous release of Act 3 and a much longer release of the whole event. Now that all the events and exciting things have been released, I've decided that it's finally time to talk about all of the main factors of this event and rate and review them. Let's start off with the most expansive one and that is the lobby. I wasn't expecting that the whole lobby's rooms and designs would be changed completely but they were. Honestly I like the giant robot in the back of the lobby and the whole eclipse thing which is pretty neat in my opinion. They also did add this whole other area which over time added a new dimension and reality and it is pretty good. The only complaints I have is when crossing over to the portal to the play of the axe where all the devs are for whatever reason there is this one dev who is just alone in this corner honestly it kind of looks depressing and maybe like one of the devs are trying to imply that this man did something bad i don't know what they did that that basically made it so that they were the only ones in this corner where two basically all the other devs on the left side are pretty much just staring at them but if this was the guy who had the idea to make the U the ugc's rng then honestly they deserve it are you serious right now bro but oh yeah ugc's we'll get to that later for all the decorations and designs of the lobby, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. I really did like pretty much every detail that did, didn't have to put it in, but still did like the spawning area's green smoke. Now to the skin crates. We'll keep this as short as possible. For whatever reason, they gave three skins to one character, which is the minigunner. Kind of a bit of an overkill, but hey, I like them. The only ones I didn't really like too much was the hunter and while well, somewhat of the scout early on, but his later levels, he became a bit better. The farm yes. was a good one, the ranger was alright, and overall the Halloween crate choices were decent. I would give this green crate an overall... 7.5 out of 10. If it wasn't for the minigunners, then I would have put it much, much lower. But the chest key animation was bugged at first, so I have to decrease a few points there. You have a problem with that? Fight me. So at this point, every game needs a battle pass because without one, your game is pretty much a waste of time and pointless to devote time into. So naturally, this game has one. Now I will give it the benefit of the doubt. They didn't create a battle pass every one to two months and are only Halloween themed. Number two, they didn't make it so that the battle pass was just a nuisance to pretty much uh, progress through it while they were getting pretty garbage stuff and hopefully later on they actually got the good stuff, you know? Number three, this was the best one of, out of all of them that there was just no premium option with better stuff which is nice since it is all completely free and you don't have to waste more robux in order just to get the better stuff now that we're done with the obvious points let's take a closer look at the pass now i have to be honest every reward in this pass never felt like it was something dumb or you know not as good as the other better rewards later on even the coins you get early on are decent since you need as much savings to purchase a better tower or a skin crate or even a golden crate in my opinion the best reward for me was the crossbow since the final upgraded version of the crossbow was pretty much an inspiration of clash of clans like jesus christ but not gonna lie the final upgrade for the crossbow is pretty sick i know a lot of people love the dj skin as the final reward and i like it too but not love it i think it's nice but not necessarily my i guess fashion or something like that so out of the progression system getting around what 50 to 100 uh what's it called or more pumpkin heads depending on what game mode or act you were playing the battle pass rewards and how satisfying it was to get to each and every one of them i'd give this a pretty good rating of a 10 out of 10. I literally didn't think any of these rewards for, were from barely any effort or just downright lazy. Maybe the name tag is, but I'll give that a pass. Or to these rewards just felt like they did it because it just felt easier and just more, I guess, time saving to do. All these rewards just felt creative and cool and basically thoughtful to actually do. And plus, some of these they didn't even have to do, like for an example, like two emotes basically. I mean, I'll give them credit, they created the most aggressive and intense emote I think I have ever seen, but hey, a nice reward. Now, let's talk about the axe. So I'm going to be honest, the beginning of Act 1 was a nightmare, mainly because of how no one could play since there was an error message, but anyway, in my opinion, out of all of the axe, 
Act 2, in my opinion, was just the best one. Act 1 was in general, easy and simple. Sure, there were a few times to where it got a little bit tricky, but overall was a good start to the events. Also, the cutscenes were easy to follow, but you know, buggy. Act 3, in my opinion, was just not great at launch. Act 3 was pretty much impossible during launch. Not only did the enemies already spawn crazy fast with a large amount of HP, but also the amount of money you get at spawn and with eliminations was just not enough. Also, Wave 14 was also impossible as well. Buggy boss, hitboxes, they were somewhat fast, the spotlights just didn't work on them a lot of the times, and you just didn't get that much batteries from eliminations. Act 3 was just a disaster in my opinion and extremely difficult than it needed to be. Still is hard with randoms, you know. But for whatever reason, the narrator who was originally, you know, a good guy just became the bad guy for some reason. Like, his reason for becoming a bad guy and switching to the opposite was because, and I quote, he just had been working on this behind the scenes, end quote. But like, why or what for what? Like, it doesn't make sense, literally the lore. Act 2 was hard when you first started, but when you get a good setup with, you know, rangers and pretty much accelerators, it wasn't as hard as we thought. Sure, stage 2 was harder, however, with all the room and very long path for enemies, it really wasn't just that bad. Also, the cutscene was a bit vague on what was being told about this girl commanding an army, but that was it. The enemies were difficult, but you know, creative, like the very fast furry, the Frankie dude who had two lives, the basic buff version of a necromancer reaper and a hot cheetah who spawned goddamn little children. I don't know why I found this act to be the most enjoyable every single time I got to basically replay it, and a good reward better than, you know, Act 3. So in my opinion, Act 2 was just the best one out of the other two acts. Hard, but you know, pretty good reward, and plus it was just a really good time the entire time you were just playing this. So I'm giving the whole review of Act 1, 2, and 3 a 6.5 out of 10. If it wasn't for Act 2 clutching it up, I would say that these events were literally a 5 or lower. The rewards and UGCs for all those acts felt both rewarding and fitting for the specific atmosphere for those levels. Speaking of rewards and UGCs... The UGCs, god where to start with this. The UGCs were just downright horrendous to get, but you know are pretty good looking so I'll give them that. But what I don't like is how to get these, or necessarily how to claim these rewards. It is so awful. Like, I can imagine all of them in a conference room and one of them just says, Okay, now that we got all the levels and the designs of the UGCs, how do we allow for players to claim them? And this one retard says, Ooh, I know, we should make them RNG because F them. Like, why RNG? Have these devs ever heard of, oh, I don't know, challenges? The most basic of basic reward-based progression system? Here's some examples that I can literally shove right in front of you after I literally cook them within, get this, one minute! For the Pumpkin Kid UGC, eliminate 50 to 100 pumpkins. Simple. Very simple. You just have to play the game, act one, a few times, and boom, you got the UGC. Nice. For the Executioner Helmet, eliminate the Executioner, executioner two to three times. Now, obviously, just beat the game three times to get this one, so yeah, simple as well. Number one, or the next one, Jackobot Head, eliminate the Jackobot. Yeah, only once. Only once since, you know, it's already a challenge to get to the final part and you know, beat it already. So, next up is the Reaper's Scythe. Eliminate the Reapers four to five times at most. Like, boom, that easy. Those are some challenges I could literally give you in my resume signing up for Paradox and boom, I would already become a dev on how fast and easy those um, designed of challenges are. That was such easy and I basically made it that way or designed them that way because everyone has a chance to get it. But instead, we just have this system where you might get one. Keyword on the might. Basically meaning not really, most likely not basically get them. And the thing is, you need to beat the act first in order to have a chance to be a winner. 
no matter how many times you lose, you're just delaying the time or basically just decreasing the chances of you getting it because the more you lose and the longer you're in axe and struggling, the basic times or just many of the times in the background people are already getting this UGC before you. So that's already difficult enough and when you have to beat it or when you do beat it, you may, may get it, but most likely not. After you beat the act and you don't get it, you know what you gotta do? You just have to replay the same act and you might get it. You have to continue this process over and over and over again until number one, number one, you somehow get it or number two, most likely number two, you decide to kill yourself from boredom and from a lack of luck. Like really? You really want players to just do this over and over and over again with a false excitement when they beat a mode with no reward guaranteed. Obviously they chose this path because number one, the more people that play their game with a longer playtime means that they make more money. But just because you think you're doing the right thing to get more money doesn't change the fact that the way you do it isn't for a beneficial reason for everyone else. So in summarization, making the AGCs RNG base was just a scummy move and the better way to do it was to you know make challenges out of it plus they would technically get the same outcome since people are spending time and motivation with effort to get these which still means that the devs are still getting more money or maybe even more money so why not do challenges i don't understand challenges arrange from being simple and a good reward to be do this thing because i fucking told you to do it and you're gonna do it because you're a bitch. I'm giving the UGC system a breathtaking 2 out of 10. The only reason I'm not making this a 0 out of 10 is because I'm also basically taking into the fact that how the UGC's designs are and how nice they are as well. UGC dev who decided to make them RNG based, go to hell.